Greetings to you. Bishop Vetter here, your bishop. I want to come to you today to talk to you about anointing of the sick, another one of the seven sacraments. Anointing of the sick. Every sacrament, huh, is Jesus is the one who's celebrating it. He's the one doing it. So he's still healing the sick. He left us a sacrament, right? A visible sign of an invisible reality that here Jesus is on the face of the earth through his instruments, the priests, uh, anointing, healing. And every time anointing of the sick is celebrated, there's healing. Sometimes it's physical, but there's always healing, right, of our souls to strengthen us for, those, for that illness. Because sickness, huh, it has a way of just wearing us down. When I get the common cold for three days or flu, oh my gosh, it's hard just to pray. Your head's pounding, right? Well, when you have it for weeks on end or terminal illness for years on end, it really beats the soul up. It wears it down. And so it needs strengthening. And Jesus comes and strengthens it. Because there's a battle for our souls. God won it, right, by sending Jesus. But the devil, he tries to snatch it. And anointing protects our souls, right, for that final journey. But it's also so important to remember that suffering for us as people of faith is not pointless. St. Paul said, we make up for what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. That's an amazing statement. Amazing that we can help Christ save the world. And it's because we're incorporated into him through baptism and confirmation. And now the anointing of the sick, what's it do? It puts us right with Jesus on the cross. You know, if you'd graft a branch onto a tree, you know how to do that, right? You'd cut into the bark, get in there where it's nice and soft, put a little branch, tape it around, and guess what starts to happen? That branch starts to grow, get its nourishment from the tree trunk. Amazing, it becomes part of the tree. So too with us, at the anointing of the sick, the sick person is being grafted onto the cross of Jesus, put right on there, and gets his lifeblood or her lifeblood right from the cross, right from Jesus, right? Uh, to endure and to be strengthened. Uh, that suffering, we can offer it, right? To offer it, to say, Jesus, I offer you my suffering. Use it however you want. Have big intentions. Say, I give you my suffering. Give us more priests, more religious. Bless my family. Give me world peace. Big stuff. Because your suffering is worth it. Your suffering is worth big stuff. Right? And so, uh, just an encouragement. Don't wait. Right? Don't wait. Those of you a little older, you, you, know, you know you've heard of the last sacraments. What are the last sacraments? Well, before someone would die, if they want the last sacraments, what they're asking for is the Eucharist, confession, and anointing of the sick. Those are the last sacraments. It used to be anointing of the sick before Vatican II was given just as close as we could to death. Well, the church at Vatican II spread that out and said, you don't have to wait till you're near death, and you can receive it several times as your condition may get worse. But not to wait, so if you're going in for a serious surgery. It's not for the common cold or for a hangnail. Right? It's for serious injury, serious uh, uh, illness, sickness. Uh, but you don't have to be at the footsteps of death. I know sometimes when I'm as a priest and going into someone's room and say, would you like to be anointed? It kind of freaks them out because they're thinking, am I going to die? No, that's not what we're saying. Right? We want to offer you healing, Jesus does, and he needs your suffering with him on the cross. He wants to put you right on there, graft you onto his cross, and to allow you to help save the world through your sufferings. And so I encourage you not to wait right before your surgery. Call up the priest right, to get anointed. Make a, it, it makes quite a difference. Um, so that's a bit about anointing of the sick. God bless you.